Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight I'm out here working on a project and I had a guy message me. This was a project that I wasn't sure if I could do. So I'm having to do a little testing and it's something that I do want to add to my list of items that I can offer uh, both here at the shack as well as maybe at events. Uh, probably more towards here at the shack because it does involve a rotary. So if you've ever asked yourself the question, can you engrave a baseball and what way would you go about doing it? That's what we're going to be covering tonight. Uh, I'm having to do some testing. I've been in here. I've done went through a few of them, guys, trying to figure out the best way. Uh, but I'm going to go over some of the things that I've learned about engraving baseballs that are problematic and uh, discuss that. And then some of the approaches that I'm taking to try to counteract that and the results that I'm coming up with. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around and we'll be right back. All right guys, so as I've always told you, when you get ready to engrave something, be prepared to have sacrificial pieces. Uh, so far, I have messed up three baseballs attempting to get this dialed in right. And I expected to do that. I bought a bucket of like seven or eight. So that was the whole plan is I don't want to turn out something until I've tested every possible scenario to try to get the best results that I can. And just to let you guys know, it's been a rough start. Uh, I've had to I've had to change some things but before we get into this I want to point out to you as always guys anytime you're engraving anything that you don't know exactly what is in it please use an enclosure proper ventilation take safety precautions and or either just don't do it okay what I do in my shop sometimes may not be the best ideas so don't do don't do what I do all right <laughs> take care of yourself but I am using the enclosure. Everything I'm doing is inside the enclosure. It's ventilated. So all you guys that may be concerned about it, I'm good. I've uh, been out here for a couple of hours hammering away at these things, trying to come up with the way to do it to make it look good. And the problem that I'm finding is these white balls, they like to scorch. All right, guys? I'm going to show you. This is a. This is if if you engrave one of these guys without masking it or without doing anything, uh, this is the kind of this is the kind of problem I'm having. You get a lot of yellowing. And guys, it's not just me. Okay, I went on Etsy. I've looked at some of the pictures people offering these engraved balls. It's not just me. That's a real problem. Okay, so to combat that, I've been trying a couple of different things. I have tried the old approach of wrapping them up in painter's tape, which, you know, masking them, and it's somewhat effective. The problem that I'm having with masking, and I'll show you on this one right here, is that if there are any creases in the mask, and guys, this is a round object, so there's going to be some creases unless you are a lot better at masking round objects than I am. This is what you end up with. And you can see those little, those little lines of burn there. That is the creases that formed in the masking. And I took time to try to get them all out. But you can't because this is not a flat object and you're using flat tape. So that approach, not exactly ideal. It, it, it was better, better than none without, with, with doing it without anything, but still not ideal. So then it dawned on me, I needed something that could conform to the round shape. I needed something that would protect the white and keep the, uh, the scorching from happening. And so I decided to try Thermark. That's the only thing in the shop that I have that other than just using regular paint. And I guys, you can do the same thing with the chalk paints and some of the other paints, the water soluble paint. I've got some of that back on the shelf. But to me, that stuff, I can't get an even coat with it. Uh, if you have an airbrush kit, maybe maybe that might work for you. So, but, so I tried, decided to try that, and I got a lot better results. Still got a little scorching right there in the bottom, but I think that is because I didn't have it coated well enough. So that's where we're at right now. So I'm kind of digging the Surmark approach so far. So we're going to go through the steps. I'm going to show you how I'm doing this, and I've got the Atom Stack A30 over here. Uh, got it fired up. That's what I'm going to be doing for this job. We've got the Atom Stack rotary on there. Uh, so we're going to get that thing fired up and try to turn some of these out. Just show you the different processes and how it looks. Uh, like I said, I bought a whole bucket of balls to uh, test. 
and I destroyed a couple. Uh, I mean, when I say destroyed, guys, I have I have marked these things everywhere possible to try to to try to work it out and get it to where uh, it's like I want it. Now, I do kind of like this one. Up first is nothing at all. All right, I will tell you one thing that I have learned about putting something on these guys. Uh, the, if you engrave them by themselves, there's some type of chemical, there's some type of combustible inside here. You will see some little small flashes of like miniature explosions in the work area. Just going to fair warn you. That's why I say keep enclosed, plenty of airflow. So this is going to be a bit of a noisy video, but safety first, guys. All right, guys, so that's the three techniques that I decided to use tonight. And I'm gonna get these things cleaned up and kind of show you what they look like. So we've got the plane, the wrapped, and the sir mark. So let me grab a rag. Now to keep things fair, uh, I'm just gonna use the rubbing alcohol to clean these things up. That seems to do a pretty good job uh, on getting the sticky stuff from the coating, as well as getting a lot of the staining off uh, depending on the look that you're wanting to go for with your balls, uh, you, like I said, without anything, doesn't look bad. It does tend to have a lot more char in it appears, but it's not terrible. So as long as the charred look is something that the customer that you have is good with, then I think that would probably be the easiest way to go about doing these things. It would, it would make the cleanup easier as well as it's not a bad looking burn. So I've just about got it as clean as it's gonna get, guys. So this is what uh, this is what the end result looks like. This is nothing on the ball whatsoever. You can see there there there's some there's some yellowing right there around the text, but for the most part, it doesn't look bad. Okay, so that's plain. Just remember what that looked like, guys. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel this guy. Okay, this is the one that we use. I use the green uh, painter's tape to try to keep down the scorching and to protect the ball and hopefully make the cleanup a little bit better. So I'm gonna peel this stuff off. And as you can see, there's a little bit of weeding that you have to do because some of the letters are gonna leave those little small pieces uh, where you know it gets cut, but it ends up leaving it, leaving it on there. So you're going to want to take care to get those out uh, and try to make sure you don't leave those green pieces on there. Uh, as well as the logo. You can see the logo. It's, it's currently a green logo. Uh, but there's a lot of fine text on there, so you just kind of scrape that out. Uh, you can use a tool if you want. I have found that if I just kind of rub it, I can get under the edge and get it to come off. Now, immediately following the removal of the green tape, this is what I end up with. The one thing that I can say about the wrapping is wrapping them is very effective if you can get it to where you don't have any of those creases anywhere that you're gonna engrave. I think it's possibly the best approach as far as economically speaking. Now, it does a good job. The cleanup with the rubbing alcohol with this green tape is relatively easy. So I'm gonna get this thing wiped down and show you how it looks. And this is what you get. 
So right there, as you can see, guys, I did a really good job, apparently, of getting all the creases out. Didn't get a whole lot of scorching on the ball. But if you roll around to the text, look right there at the bottom of the S and a few of those places. A uh, few of those places where the, the masking didn't quite hold, I did get a little bit of, uh, a little bit of browning or staining and i have tried guys this stuff you can scrub and scrub and scrub and it does not want to come off so that's the pitfalls of doing it this way but if that is acceptable as far as your customer is concerned if that is acceptable if they want it to look branded so to speak then that might be a plus i mean you may not want to put nothing on them because like i said the bear ball didn't do bad it didn't do bad at all guys so i'm gonna put this one next to the bear one right now So these are the two, these are the two that I did. Okay, this is, uh, of course, you can tell which one was masked and which one was not, okay? The, this one here was masked. This one had nothing. So depending on the look that you're going for, guys, you, you may not want to mask. You may just want to take your chances and go for it. Uh, but you can see the text, both of them probably got about the same amount of distortion and, and darkening. So I'm gonna set these over here and grab up our final contestant. All right, so this was my experiment, guys. Cerakoted ball, or Ceramarked ball, all right? And in fairness, even though this will come off with water, I don't really wanna soak my, my baseball in water, I'll be using rubbing alcohol to clean this guy as well. Now, baseballs are made to be out in the weather, so I don't think cleaning them in a sink would be a bad idea. It would probably be a little more effective than trying to clean it with my rubbing alcohol. But I'm gonna to try to rub it down and get most of this stuff off of it that I can with this rag. But we'll be right back. All right, guys. Note, Sir Mark comes off better with water than it does with alcohol. Just throwing that out there. So I had to break down and go outside and use the hose to get the Sir Mark off of it. Uh, and I realized too that during, while I was recording, I, did not properly line this one up. But I'm gonna show you, this is what this one looks like. This is the Ceramark ball. I took all the Ceramark off of it and uh, wiped it down really, really good under the water hose and then took a dry rag and dried it uh, to try to get as much of the Ceramark, if there's any left on there, off of it as I could. So here we go. That's the Ceramark ball, guys. And no scorching whatsoever. It is a little dark around the edges. Uh, but I'm going to say that's probably because I didn't get all the Ceramark out. And there's the, 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 the logo. So I'm going to get the plain ball and compare the two. So this is plain. Uh, this one's the plain ball with nothing on it versus Ceramark. All right. So depending on the look you want to go for with your text and the, how much scorch is acceptable for you then that's your options guys you got three options you can just go with it and own the scorch uh, you can use the mask which is probably the most economical but it is uh it is a little tricky you got to make sure you get all those wrinkles out of there because if those wrinkles are in there that gas is going to get caught in those wrinkles and it is going to put those stained streaks on your material now one way to combat that i'm using the wider green tape so only use enough green tape to cover exactly where you're going to engrave. If you're doing text, that's simple enough. That's easy enough. So I would say probably that would be the best approach all around because the Ceramark does create an issue with trying to get it off uh, to try to get the, uh, you know, all of the black off of it. Ceramark is a lot more expensive than the green tape. So economically speaking, I'm thinking the green tape is going to be the, uh, the, the way to go on these if you're gonna do those. That would probably be my recommendation. Like I said, Ceramark does work if you had that idea and you wanted to try it, but all things considered, the cleanup's not that bad with the green tape as long as you have some rubbing alcohol or some type of sticker remover. I stick with alcohol because it evaporates and it doesn't leave an odor, but as long as the cleanup doesn't bother you, the, the, the tape seems to be the go-to for now, guys. So just to kind of reiterate what I'm saying, uh, as you can see, the balls, when you put the tape on there, if, if you can press it in and get it as smooth and get all of those bubbles out wherever you're going to engrave and try to get all those lines out, maybe even try using a squeegee or something, 
If you can get that completely on there so there's no air gaps, this seems to be the best approach uh, to speak of. Now, so if you're trying to do multiple lines of text, probably that's one of those times that you would want to try to break out the uh, Surmark or other, you know, water-based paint and try that approach. But play around with it and see what you think, figure out what works best for you. And I hope, if nothing else, guys, I hope this kind of saves you a little time if you do decide you want to get into these things. Uh, I have had a lot of people asking me, can I do these? So I wanted to try it out. But as always, guys, use ventilation, maintain safety. Uh, you never know what's in these things, okay? So make sure to be as safe as you can with it, but have fun. All right, guys, that's going to conclude the video for tonight. Like I said, just wanted to bring you guys along for my testing while I was doing this. Uh, good news is I got all the testing done to get my settings. I managed to sacrifice three of the balls for you guys, and I still have two left. So until next time, guys, be safe. Have a good day.